this episode of ground speak today we have sharmishta paliwal with us and she's going to talk about her initiative kid veda uh ground speak is a platform uh, for those whose voices primarily remain unheard and uncalled for and hence it seeks to bring out bottom up narratives and establish a new normal where uh, realities of the ground became become the fundamental base for discussions and deliberations on grander stages through um ground speak asian confluence wants to acknowledge the situation and the status of individuals who who form a very uh, large part of our community so ma'am uh, could you tell us more about you and your venture and how did you come upon this idea thank you ashani and thank you asian conference for inviting me for ground speak uh, uh when i started kidveda i was already working as an entrepreneur in the education sector uh you know okay. the idea of starting uh, kidveda struck me when i first took my child uh, for admissions in a preschool uh, and i realized that uh, i was not getting what i was looking for a preschool mm-hmm. uh, should be a place where it's fun where it's interesting and at the same time uh, it should fulfill the uh, learning criteria or the development uh, goals or milestones Right. So when I started uh, searching for a preschool for my daughter, uh, I realized that there were two categories of uh, preschools uh, in the northeast or in Guwahati, particularly where I live and work. Uh, either they were too focused on the uh, chalk and uh, blackboard teaching, and uh, 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 too little emphasis was paid on uh, making learning fun, uh, interesting, and uh, focusing on the other development areas like uh, motor skills. or emotional development and the other uh, were the preschools uh, which were completely focused on just uh, fun and uh, play activities without any uh, learning objectives right so that is uh, where i realized that uh, we actually needed a preschool where both these uh, could come together so that is what uh, was the idea behind uh, starting uh, kidveda now i just did not want to start a preschool i also wanted this venture to be a source of livelihood or a chance of starting entrepreneurial ventures of uh, the many people in the northeast who were educated uh, who were capable but who were looking for opportunities so that's what really motivated me to start kidveda not just as a standalone venture but also as a venture which uh, or a brand which others could take up and grow right so um all of it sounds wonderful ma'am and specifically uh, the idea of emotional education because i think we as a, a country should talk more about um, how how it is to actually grow up right so it's it's a very important part of what makes us us and i'm i'm glad that this is something that you're doing um what were some of the challenges ma'am that you faced while um, trying to get the business going up and running uh see uh, the first challenge was uh, you know coming up with something which was uh, local uh, which could people could believe because usually you know uh, being from the northeast we have the mindset that uh, if it's from outside uh, from the rest of india it's usually good but if it's started by an entrepreneur in the northeast you know they would uh, look at it with some doubt so convincing right. people uh, initially uh, was a challenge Uh, but i'm glad mm-hmm. that uh, we could overcome that and uh, people have accepted us lot of uh, entrepreneurs have taken up uh, kidveda as their business venture and we are providing a lot of employment uh, especially to women through right. our event right right so i think that kind of leads to our uh, next question so um what kind of livelihood generation is your business leading to and um how are you trying to engage uh, women in your enterprise because i think that's what you talked about that uh, you want to promote livelihood for women so how how are you going about that ma'am right so you know if you look at the uh, demographic profile of the uh, people of the northeast you'll find that the literacy level is very high uh, as mm-hmm. compared to the rest of india so we have educated people here but at the same time uh, employment opportunities are less right uh, so kidveda is a venture which provides a scope of uh, entrepreneurship to educated uh, men and women in the northeast uh, in the early childhood sector 
So uh, till now, uh, we have around 70 entrepreneurs um, in different parts of the Northeast, urban areas, rural areas, semi-urban uh, areas who have taken up uh, this venture. Mm -hmm. And uh, since uh, we are working in the area of early childhood education, most of uh, the people uh, who are employed are women. So, uh, you know, uh, around th uh, 300 women are at present employed in the various branches of uh, Kidveda. Yeah. That that's congratulations to you, ma'am. That sounds like an incredibly, incredibly successful venture, and I'm glad you're uh, you're doing something for the for the women in the region. Uh, what are some of the like the interesting instances from working on ground? Is there anything that like you can share with us? Some interesting. Yeah, tips? first, uh, you know, uh, first interesting thing is about the name. You know, when we when we uh, first uh, uh, t uh, talk about Kidveda in um, remote locations or uh, places uh, where we venture out for the first time, they usually think it's some kind of a Vedic uh, school or something. Right. So, right. Uh, so we have to tell them that uh, we derive the name from Veda because it is about learning, and since about it's about children, it's uh, kids. Right. Uh, so yeah, uh, yes. Uh, that, that is, you know, on the lighter side. But, uh, you know, the thing is that uh, wherever uh, we ventured out, uh, we've been received very warmly because there is a huge need. And uh, being a local uh, an organization, we understand the educational scenario and the requirements, requirements uh, of children of the region. So we can tune in our curriculum, our processes, uh, our training programs to what is required intrinsically in the region yeah so right that works for us right and i think it sounds wonderful and i think what it sounds to me like is that um you're kind of tailoring your program uh, for the children that you are uh, targeting towards to right so your program changes with the people that you're the children that you're targeting and i think that's that's a very dynamic process and um, I, I suppose that it requires a lot of work also. And, and it's, it's always just constantly uh, developing your coursework, right? So um, another question that I think that crosses everybody's minds when it's a woman-led business is that, uh, do you think that being a woman in a largely male-dominated landscape has shaped and offered you a different experience than your male peers? Uh, yes, it uh, was initially uh, difficult uh, in the sense that, you know, uh, as you rightly said, that we do work uh, in, a, in, a male's in a male world and it is dominated by uh, male entrepreneurs and people tend to believe uh, male entrepreneurs more than a woman entrepreneur because, you know, exactly. uh, usually uh, for a woman, it's, it's like something else or a hobby, but it's uh, never considered a serious uh, thing when it comes to it. So it did require uh, some kind of an effort. But being in the Northeast, the advantage is uh, the position of women here are uh, different from the rest of India. Mm -hmm. Women are seen in the role of uh, leaders as heads of families because uh, we have societies where the woman is the head of the family. So that has worked as an advantage. Uh, but there are times when uh, as a woman entrepreneur, um, there are challenges. But I guess uh, with time, it's improving. And I hope it gets better with uh, as the days pass by. You hope so too, ma'am, because uh, inspiring businesses like yours, um, it, it's just, it, it makes us at Asian Confluence also very proud to be associated with, uh, with somebody like you. Um, my next question would be, ma'am, uh, how has COVID-19 affected your business? Like, what are some of the innovations and changes that... Uh, you would like to see in the coming future in the way that uh, business community functions in the Northeast? So this, this, this is like a two-part question. So you can first tell me about how COVID-19 affected, affected your business. And second could be, um, second where you could tell me more about some of the changes that you'd like to see uh, in the Northeast. Right. COVID-19 has um, of, uh, really th thrown up a lot of challenges for us also, like everyone else. But it's also been a great learning opportunity. Uh, see, uh, we deal with very small children. We uh, deal with children between the age group of uh, three to uh, six years. Mm -hmm. So directly, you know, converting the system of uh, classes or uh, education into the online mode is not possible because children don't sit in front of the screen for so long. Yeah. And uh, children learn through personal contact. 
So this is a time where we really changed and pivoted to a new level in terms of we developed a new method, a new process, which was a blended uh, kind of methodology where we first trained the parents. We trained our teachers, most important. Uh, and uh, we developed a new system, which is a combination of a little bit of online training. We made videos uh, on different, you know, fine motor skills, on um, different kind of activities, uh, which we gave to, uh, sent to the parents. And we also trained parents on how they could be a part of the process. Because uh, for small children, you know, you cannot just leave them alone. They need intervention, they need uh, assistance, and they need guidance. So uh, 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 parents needed to be trained in that. Teachers needed to make uh, their classes interesting, uh, innovative. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, you know, uh, we had to make sure that learning objectives were also being uh, fulfilled. So it was a it, right. it, 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 it uh, was a different uh, kind of experience, and we are very glad that it has been uh, widely appreciated by parents. So we have parents writing into us. Uh, you know, sending us mail that uh, this has really worked for them. And I think we are one of the very few preschools in the region who could really um, transform to that level. Adapt to the adapt to the learning. Adapt to the new changes, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Um, what about uh, some of the changes that you would like to see in uh, the business landscape in the Northeast? Uh, see, uh, over the few years, we've seen a lot of positive changes in the Northeast. Uh, but uh, there are a few areas where uh, still things uh, desire to be improved. I would uh, like to see, uh, or entrepreneurs like me would like to see a few changes. First is uh, uh, the local uh, regulatory compliances, which are uh, very ambiguous at times and are not in favor of entrepreneurs like myself. Um, mm. You know, uh, so uh, I would really look forward to seeing some changes there. Uh, second is, you know, uh, the work culture, unlike the rest of India, uh, like the rest of India, particularly the South and the West, uh, maybe a little bit uh, uh, more professionalism could be uh, expected. Uh, right. So, yeah, uh, um, mainly those two areas uh, where uh, I would, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, some changes uh, would be appreciated. And also, you know, uh, uh, the society here, the kind of respect uh, that an artist or a singer or a writer would get, you know, an entrepreneur fails to, uh, you know, initiate or uh, get that kind of uh, respect uh, because here still, you know, the word profit is not considered very welcome. Right. So I think uh, uh, there's a small requirement for a mind shift or a shift of perception. Right, right. So there's this perhaps like a perception that when if you're creatively making money, if, if you're in the creatives, you somehow yes. have more value than somebody who's Absolutely. actually right. Yes. But yes. Um, we we I think at Asian Confluence are always uh, trying to encourage. So so with dialogues like this, this is the reason why we we need to know what it's like to be. Um, an entrepreneur on on ground working on ground so i'm, I'm glad that you shared your perspectives with us ma'am and you were so candid with us um i think uh, i have just a couple more questions um what are some of the policies and schemes and interventions would you like to see from government and private sectors for facilitating women entrepreneurs in the northeast region so I, do you think that uh, there needs to be more intervention by the private sector or has the government been enough uh yeah, see, uh, from the uh, end of the government, as I uh, just mentioned, maybe the uh, regulatory norms, right. if it was not so ambiguous, it could help. And from uh, and also if uh, the ease of the business uh, needs to be a little more, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's scope for improvement there. From uh, the uh, uh, other entrepreneurs uh, in the private sector, I believe uh, if uh, uh, th there was chance of more collaboration, and uh, mutual cooperation, it would help businesses, uh, you know, suppose, you know, I would uh, just uh, give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, see, uh, uh, now there is a, a requirement uh, to start a school where you need uh, playgrounds. Now, if, uh, you know, the, uh, there was a, a provision where uh, playgrounds could be shared between schools, 
Right. So, you know, that is just an example uh, that I'm giving you. So uh, there is a scope of more collaboration, more cooperation between uh, the private players uh, for ultimately benefiting everyone. So, th- uh, so yeah. Uh, Collaborative I efforts, I think, is something that yes, should be yes. encouraged. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yeah. So uh, I think with that, uh, I, I have exhausted my list of questions and ma'am, you've given us some really, really great answers with very well thought out points, ma'am. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to talk about us or like, talk about with us or uh, anything else you would like to highlight about your experience as a woman entrepreneur? I think uh, Asian Conference is doing a, a great job uh, in um, encouraging entrepreneurs like myself because we do need encouragement, we do need support. It's not easy to come by. Uh, so it really helps when we are given a feedback, when we are mentored, uh, when uh, we are helped out. And when our voices are, uh, or our opinions uh, are taken to uh, places where it can be heard. So right. in that manner, I think Asian uh, Conference is doing a great job. Right. Uh, okay, ma'am. Thank you so much for saying that. And we really, really appreciated you taking time out and talking to us about some of the problems that you've been facing, uh, some of the challenges, some of the some of the great work that you've been doing on ground. And thank you so much for joining us, ma'am. So I think with that, we'd we'll, we'll like to end the interview. Thank you. Thank you so much.